Before we finish up our discussion of brushes today, I want to briefly go over the American Journey watercolors I've been using for the, the little quick demos. Even though we haven't done a full demo painting today, uh, many people are curious about what colors you're seeing on the paper being used. Uh, just like artists have a set number of their favorite brushes that sort of form the core of their brush quiver, uh, I have, like many artists, uh, a small, fairly small number of uh, watercolors that I consider my staple palette. So when I send out that supply list that creates a lot of anxiety for people and they see the dollar signs rolling in their head, they don't have to buy all the 20 different tubes that I may use in the, the workshop, but they can kind of stick to the core palette colors that I tend to use most often. Uh, burnt Sienna, uh, I use by the quart, uh, it seems. Yellow Ochre, another body color. Uh, pigment that I use very often, especially for foregrounds in landscapes. A couple uh, reds, uh, alizarin crimson and rambling rose. I didn't include cadmium uh, scarlet today or a similar color, and I do often use that as a warmer red. Joe's yellow, uh, a lemony, clear, transparent yellow. Prussian blue, which is my favorite dark blue, leans a little toward greenish blue. Uh, ultramarine, and cobalt blue. So those are the colors that I've used in dem demonstrating the, uh, the little techniques we've looked at today. We've kind of looked at uh, how many brushes do I actually have to have to paint a watercolor, and we came up with the magic number of five for a full sheet 22 by 30 as just a subjective number that I would recommend as a minimum uh, to get you by. Now the next question that everyone asks is how much do I have to spend? As I mentioned, when I send out a supply list, uh, it always creates a little bit of anxiety for me because I know that it's gonna create some anxiety for at least a few other people. Uh, it's difficult to balance how much to, uh, how many supplies, how much equipment to tell folks to bring to a workshop. If I shortchange the list, then I'm gonna demo something that folks don't have uh, and, and they may be, may be a little frustrated by that. But if I um, go too overboard, they quickly see the dollars adding up and we're all looking at uh, our costs quite carefully these days. Luckily, we're here at Cheap Joe's, when you take a workshop, you can choose to walk next door and purchase an item. That's not always the case in some workshop settings. But let's look at costs. And I'm gonna use the one inch flat brush, tra traditional watercolor brush, as an example of the range of options that you have. If we start at the lower cost end, and I'm just going to say, I don't remember prices real well, but I'm going to sort of put these brushes in the, the, hopefully the proper range, and you can go to the Cheap Joe's catalog or website to get the exact price on them. But generally, uh, a synthetic white nylon brush is uh, less than $10, and a good watercolorist can paint a beautiful watercolor with a white nylon brush. Uh, what what are we looking at when we, we discuss the, the qualities versus the disadvantages of a relatively inexpensive brush? Well, one of the things you'll find is that base white nylon brushes are fairly stiff and they will not have the load carrying capability that something like a Kalinsky Sable or a squirrel hair brush have. Uh, the diameters of the fibers don't tend to reach a point like some of the textured nylon or, or treated nylon brushes. So the diameter of the fibers tends to be a little more uniform, making the brush a little less capable of carrying as much water and pigment. The other thing I find that is a little bit frustrating sometimes is that an inexpensive nylon brush uh, feels slick. Uh, it doesn't have the same quality feel that a Kalinsky or, or squirrel hair brush has. But having said that, this is certainly a fine choice for someone who's on a tight budget. You can paint a watercolor, you can do a proficient wash with this brush. It's just not gonna give you quite the same performance characteristics of a more expensive brush. And I will point out that this is a very well-made brush. I would shy you away from uh, purchasing very, very cheap and expensive brushes that don't have nickel ferrules or, or nice tight fit between the shaft and the ferrule. Uh, Having said that, inexpensive nylon is okay. Uh, I would tend to push you at least one level up if you're going to 
uh, pursue being a serious watercolorist or hope to at least stay with this pastime for a while. Let's look at the next steps up. We have a couple brushes here from uh, Cheap Joe's, an American Journey interlocked nylon uh, and a golden fleece nylon brush. Similar brushes in some ways. The golden fleece, uh, I will tell you honestly, I started with back in the early 90s, I believe, and painted with them for years and years before moving into a natural hair brush. They certainly serve the purpose well. They're good performance, uh, nice, clean, geometric lines. Uh, I have very little, if any, problems with folks choosing the golden fleece or the newer uh, interlocked nylon brushes over a natural hair, specifically if cost is a real factor. Um, I believe the, these brushes come in in the less than $20 range, maybe more around $15. Differences. Uh, in all honesty, I'm not sure what the trade secret is to make golden nylon, but what I will tell you is that a treated nylon brush uh, has a softer feel than the standard white nylon, and oftentimes manufacturers vary the, the uh, diameter of the fibers so that they tend to have more capillary action, meaning they hold more water in, they carry a little bit more of a load than something like the uh, pure white nylon bristle. So golden brush, great choice. Uh, golden fleece brush, great choice, relatively inexpensive. The interlocked uh, nylon brush, what I can tell you there is that they've molded the fiber to appear more and to form more like a natural fiber in Kalinske uh, and, and hopefully to mimic the qualities of a, a higher price Kalinske sable natural brush. Uh, same price range there. So those are two excellent choices. One step up from your basic real inexpensive nylon brush. We move up to, we talked a good bit about squirrel, uh, often often called Siberian black squirrel. Uh, squirrel hair is very soft, and if we look at the diameter of the fibers of squirrel hair compared to all of these others, it's the smallest diameter fiber, which tends to make it a softer brush. Uh, feels a little bit like my wife's makeup brush sometimes if you feel the edges, uh, feel the fibers. This one, and I'll point this out now, these are brand new brushes, haven't, haven't been treated in water. One thing I want you to note is that these brushes have a, a gum, a slight gum or glycerin coating on them to make them stiffer uh, for not being damaged within the sale shop is one of the reasons. So one of the things you'll want to do when you first buy a brush is go through a untreating process. I would take this brush, and fibers are quite stiff and feel almost like they've been glued slightly. I would soak it in lukewarm water for a while. And one of the other reasons to soak a squirrel hair brush prior to using it every time, not just the first time to get the, the glue off, is that the fibers absorb water and become less brittle. When we look at our natural hair brushes, squirrel, is, squirrel brushes are probably, without a doubt, the most fragile. So after I've soaked the brush a while, I'd also go into some of this great uh, master's brush cleaner which is a very mild brush cleaning soap that works not only on watercolor but oil and acrylic unless the oil and acrylic is dried on the brush which you don't want to happen and when I clean a brush I lather it up a bit and then I always make sure to go down to the base and sort of massage the base fibers pull them apart slightly like everything else I've mentioned today take your time doing this I heard on the news the other day, when you wash your hands to avoid the flu, you should sing the happy birthday song twice. Okay, we all tend to be a bit impatient and we want things to happen quicker than they, the time it actually should take. So, you know, give this a good work over and rinse it out. And you'll feel the softness of that fiber immediately. Squirrel hair uh, is a good choice if you want to move to a natural hair brush without spending a lot of money. As I mentioned one early in one of the earlier demos, one of the slight limitations of squirrel hair is that it will not allow you the same firmness in making shapes that uh, Kalinske will or the nylon uh, will. 
but it's a very uh, wonderful brush for making soft, diffuse washes and letting color play together on the surface of the paper. I believe this brush moves us up into the $30 price range. Uh, so probably about twice the, twice the amount or slightly close to uh, twice the amount of the uh, Golden Fleece or the, inner, the American Journey br uh, synthetic brush. Let's step up one more notch and look at a couple other options, which in all honesty, I feel that if you're making a commitment to watercolor and you kind of have, have invested in your palette and your colors, uh, and you want to really look at brush performance, this is a great uh, range to look at, these two brushes here. Um, we've got the 5050 Cheap Joe's Brush Signature Series, and, and the difference there being the handle's a little bit longer, and we have the One Inch Dream Catcher. These are very similar brushes. Uh, they are a blend of Kalinske Sable and Golden Fleece Nylon, okay? So, in a sense, you have the best of both worlds. You have the firmness and the durability of the nylon, and you has, have the absorbency and the performance of load carrying ability of the Kalinske. Uh, I have used dream catchers for quite a few years now. You'll see them in my quiver over here. Uh, these have been through a lot of paintings, a number 10, and I, I love these brushes and still use them very regularly. Okay, they're very durable, uh, still have when you wet them, quite a nice point and they are not near the cost of what a full Kalinske Sable brush is. Um, so very good choices to look at some of the hybrid brushes being made. We go to the uh, top of the line brushes in one inch flat and we look at pure Kalinske Sable which is, as most of us know is one of the highest performance and costliest fibers that we can use to bind in a brush. Uh, we've got a one inch Cheap Joe's Legend and a brush that I feel is my favorite of all time, the, the one inch Magic Dragon. Uh, not inexpensive, I can't remember what the cost of the Legend is, but the, I think it's less actually than the Magic Dragon. The Magic Dragon comes in around $130, which makes some folks uh, see dollar signs in their eyeballs. That is quite an investment. Why, why are we willing to invest in a brush of this caliber? Um, you know, the best thing I can say is once you use one several times and see how much pigment, uh, and I think I demonstrated this earlier, how much pigment and water this brush will carry, I can go clearly across a sheet of paper almost in a, in a bold, solid, dense watercolor stroke with this brush just because it's load carrying ability. Kalinske has the firmness that we need, but it's not too firm. It's not too harsh, it's like something like the white nylon is. Uh, and if you're making a long-term commitment to being a watercolor painter, it's certainly an investment that I think is, is worthwhile. Uh, if you take care of a Kalinske brush, keep it clean, uh, it's going to last you a long, long time. So it's a very durable uh, hair, a natural hair. One of the differences between these two brushes, uh, which probably accounts for some of the cost difference, if you turn them on their side, you see that the Legend, which is the traditional fine quality Kalinske here, the black one, uh, is slightly less packed than the Magic Dragon. So this, this brush is not going to carry quite the same load that the more expensive Magic Dragon is, is going to. Uh, so I hope that gives you some frame of reference about what might best fit your needs for this point in your painting journey and, and what you're willing to invest. Um, one other topic I want to look at, I mentioned the brush cleaner, which is a great product if, if you have invested in quality watercolor brushes. The Master's Brush Cleaner is certainly something you want to pick up. Uh, you can buy it in the larger tub or use this smaller uh, size container. Five dollars here. Great investment for cleaning your brushes much like uh, a shampoo would, would clean our hair. Uh, helping them last quite a bit longer. One of the other topics I wanted to point out is um, what is a quality brush? I mentioned earlier nickel or brass ferrules that, are, that fit tightly against the shaft and hair, obviously that stays in the brush most of the time. You will have some breakage on squirrel hair brushes, even occasionally if you soak them and treat them the way I suggest. You're going to have the occasional fiber that, that ends up on your paper and I mentioned also a 
finely pointed pair of tweezers will quickly get that off the paper so that it doesn't leave, leave a, a dry water mark when, when the paint dries. Uh, but let's look at some issues. When is a brush, uh, a quality brush, defective and when, when, you should, when should you send it back? I've got some old warrior brushes here of mine and uh, I'm going to tell you that I have a sentimental attachment to all of these brushes here and don't particularly want to get rid of them or stop using them. One of the things that often happens that folks are a little taken aback by, especially if you have a wooden handle enamel finish brush, is that you're going to get over time the handle contracting and expanding depending on the room conditions, the, the humidity, uh, obviously being put in water, dried, put in water, dried, uh, so, that, so that some gaps form between the fitting of the ferrule and the handle and we get some looseness. I even noticed today my Magic Dragon's got a slight little, uh, that's, that's a new one, <laughs> my Magic Dragon's got a slight little discernible uh, looseness in the, the ferrule. What I will do is, I'm not going to send a brush back to the manufacturer for that reason, even if it has a five-year guarantee. Uh, you know, that's sort of a natural uh, wear and tear type consequence, in my opinion. That's your choice as to what you want to do about it. But what I'm going to do, as I've done in the case of this uh, Skyhawk, which is no longer manufactured, a very dense squirrel hairbrush that was made by Cheap Joe's a number of years ago, two inch, well, the ferrule came off after, after a period of years. That happens, tends to happen a little more often with the flats that have a broad ferrule than it does with the rounds or the one inches. Um, very simply, what I do is I remove the handle, flake off any of the loose paint, and I take a, a hot glue gun, glue uh, put a copious amount of glue in the, in the uh, actual ferrule hole, push them down, let it dry, and I've used this brush now for two years after hot gluing it back onto the handle. So I don't really consider that uh, anything other than natural wear and tear. Uh, it's going to happen. You're going to lose the paint. That's another issue. It's, it's you know, as wood expands and contracts, uh, you're going to have that happen. You see the Issa Bay brush, which is also an expensive imported brush, has the same thing going on there. That doesn't really concern me, to be honest with you. Um, if the ferrule comes off in your first week of use, then that's another issue. Certainly you should consider calling the manufacturer or possibly getting that returned and exchanged. Uh, one of the other things I um, wanted to mention to you uh, is about hair loss <laughs> and when to send a brush back because of that. So, you know, one of the, one of the virtues of Kalinsky is that a well-made Kalinsky brush doesn't tend to lose a lot of hair fibers. Uh, if your Kalinsky brush, which is quite an investment, starts losing fibers copiously or certainly in mass, uh, you need to send it back, you know, as quickly as possible or call the manufacturer and ask about that. So, so it is fairly abnormal for a well-made Kalinsky sable brush to lose a lot of hair uh, without a, a defect reason. Uh, squirrel hair, like I said, you're going you're gonna to lose some once in a while. But generally, the hair should stay in a well-made bru uh, well brush quite a while through quite a, quite a few years of use if it's well taken care of. I hope that gives you some tips and pointers uh, from the very beginning of a broad brush overview, sorry for the pun, uh, to the point where we're looking at costs and what kind of investments you want to make. Uh, form and function are the main things to really look at and what kind of watercolors you want to paint. And as I mentioned, you may want to pick up a few specialty brush, brushes like this uh, ancient old skipper brush to paint in a very dense, bold fashion. You may want to pick up an Issa Bay soft squirrel hair brush to paint delicate, soft washes. Uh, play around, enjoy yourself, and I hope this, uh, these se sessions have been beneficial for you.